One of the highlights of this year's German film festival at Palace Cinemas is a film called Nashus, The Last Execution. And it's my great pleasure to be speaking to the visiting German director of The Last Execution, Francisca Stinkel. Francisca, welcome to Australia. Thanks a lot for having me. Pleasure to talk to you, and uh, uh, and this is such such an intriguing film. There are so many good stories to be told about East Germany, and about the Stasi, and about how so much happened uh, in the DDR the, uh, at that time. How did you come across the story of uh, uh, of this really interesting man, Werner Teske? It's now twelve years ago, and I read an impress article the fact that there was um, a death penalty in East Germany and that there were a lot of people, um, um, 166 people were executed in the GDR and I read about it and I was really shocked because um, I didn't know about that. Later on, I realized that a lot of people in Germany still don't know about this fact. And um, 12 years ago, I started my research and um, I found a photo in the internet, a photo of Dr. Werner Teske. Um, it was taken the day he was sent to prison and the photo was very intense to me. And um, for me, it seems like a very sensitive person. And I asked myself what happened to this man because he's the one who was the last person to be executed in the GDR 1981. Mm. And uh, so that was the starting point. How, how interesting. And, and in your research, you've obviously come across so much information and facts about mm. him and about the process that uh, East Germany went through. It, uh, uh, all that detail must have been quite incredible for you. Yes, um, I, the research took me eight years and um, that was the time I, I wrote on the script for eight years and I did a lot of research. I talked to a lot of historians. I talked to a lot of witnesses from the time, from the past. And, um, and I talked to a lot of people who were in prison as well during these times. And it, um, yes, it was a lot of research. And I read the files of Dr. Werner Teske, the Stasi files, and, um, and I, read the, uh, I read the records from the trial because it's also a movie about the trial that took place. And uh, so, yes, it was a lot of research, but it was very interesting. Okay. Uh, there's a lot I want to talk to you about this film. One thing struck me, in the film, he's called Franz Werner and not Werner yes. Teske. Is there a reason for that? For me, it was important um, to make clear that it's a fiction movie. It's not a documentary. Um, it's based on the life of Dr. Werner Teske and um, the main parts are from his life, but there are also some parts of the movie which, um, which, um, yeah, which I have to um, decide um, how to deal with them because the reach, I hadn't um, found something during my researching times or um, yes, I decided that um, it should have been um, fiction because I want to tell a lot about his inner life. Um, it's a movie which um, is telling the story extremely close to this um, character. And um, yes, so I, I, I had to, I took a few decisions. Um. Fair enough. You, you have to make uh, those decisions and in, uh, in making a, a dramatic film version of a true story. Um, I know you've made a number of films previously, oh. shorts, documentaries, and, and other, other films. How easy was it for you to be able to get the finance and production behind you to be able to make this film, The Last Execution? It's um, always not easy to finance a movie um, in Germany, but um, we have the possibility uh, for financing a movie. Um, there's money from the government and um, there's money from the TV stations. And uh, so, um, but it's a long process. It took one and a half year to finance this movie. And um, we had only enough money to shoot this movie in 24 days. And it's, 
a very, very short period of time for doing this. But it helped me a lot to shoot this movie on original locations. Um, um, I had the possibility and it was very important for me um, to shoot it um, at the original prison uh, in Berlin Hohenschönhausen and to shoot this movie um, on the original historical location like the Stasi headquarter in Berlin. And it's still there. Um, in some parts of the building you can visit and still the whole furniture is there, the, um, the conference rooms from Erich Mielke and everything from the past. Um, and we had the opportunity to go even inside parts of the building where nobody else is allowed to go in and to shoot there. And so um, this helped a lot to deal with a short period of time. Well, congratulations on that. That's a, and that gives the film a, a strength as well in terms of having the real locations. Um, I mean, when I was last in Berlin, I had a look at the Stasi Museum, uh, and yeah. and that is incredible. The, the 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 surveillance of people, the way people were manipulated. Uh, as soon as they started talking about the West, the awful West, they were watched, and uh, and and it was and, and this, of course came to its illogical conclusion when um, Werner Teske was uh, actually executed. Um, and yeah. it's incredible that, as you said, 166 people were killed uh, yes. by the Stasi, by, by the East German government. Yes. And it's, um, yes, you were talking about the methods of the Stasi and um, nearly every 10th citizen of the GDR worked for the Stasi and gave um, them information about other citizens. And that's how the Stasi mainly worked, that they knew a lot about all the people. And in Germany, all the files um, are kept in a huge storage and people, from, um, former citizens from the GDR can ask to read their files. And it's all there until today, a very intense process to decide for the people if they want to um, read their own file or not. Wow, how incredible. Now, now this film is, is uh, really well uh, directed. So congratulations, uh, Francesca. Thanks a lot. And, and of course, the first thing is casting because uh, Lars Eidinger, who is such a, a, a well-known uh, German actor, um, he's, he's excellent in the role. Was he your first choice? Yes, definitely. Yes, <laughs> it was, was a, a big wish to work with him on this movie. And I asked him three years before shooting when I still um, was in the process of writing this movie. And um, yes, I liked a lot how intense he is acting on, in, uh, on stage and um, in movies. And yes, and, and um, I'm also very happy about the other actors. Um, they are really well known in Germany as well, David Striso and Luisa Heyer. And um, yes, I'm very thankful um, working with them. Yes, yes, it was, it was nice to see David Strizal. Uh, I've, I've seen him in so many films as well. So uh, yeah. yes, your and casting born, is so good. <laughs> yeah, he's born, uh, he was born in the GDR and he grew up in the GDR. And um, that was also very helpful and very intense um, um, that he was on set with his own experiences from the past. Okay. Oh, excellent. Excellent stuff. Now, tell me about shooting the film. As you said, it, it took 24 days, but you give the film a certain look um, yes. to reflect the, uh, what uh, life was like and also the, uh, the, the colouring of the film to give it that yes. uh, look of what East Germany is like and so on. Um, uh, that must have been uh, something very deliberate for you to sustain throughout the shooting. Yes, um, it was very important for me to um, have the colors of the GDR, let's call it so, um, um, in the movie. Um, it's a lot of brown and um, nearly like a black and white movie, but it's a, uh, it's a color movie, but um, the colors from the GDR are, are colors like this. And, um, and um, we decided to shoot everything with um, a gimbal, it's a camera. The cameraman is, um, has in front of him and is um, able to work to walk together with the um, actors. And uh, for us, it was really important um, to be side by side with the main character and always be with him because I wanted um, to um, 
to direct and uh, this movie as close as possible um, to this Franz to walk with him through the last year of his life. And um, so you can hear him breathing and um, you can follow um, the way he is um, anticipating everything. And for me, it was really important even with the breathing because I think breathing is something we do not control. Um, breathing is something very emotional. It tells a lot about our inner, um, our inner life at this moment, how you breathe, if you are breathing heavily or if you are stopping breathing. And um, so this camera is nearly always very close to Franz. Mm. And so I, hopefully it's a movie not from the outside to look on a political system, but it's more, it's, I hopefully that's a big wish of mine. It's a movie that you can, um, that you can really um, get in touch with this political system through the eyes of, of a human being and um, through his emotions. Yes, and you certainly did that very well. The, the close-ups we get uh, of, um, of Franz um, so frequently and, and the inner torment that he's obviously going through um, by, by what started out to look like what a wonderful opportunity to get this apartment and and to uh, uh, and to work for the government and uh, and and then it turned out to be uh, something quite dreadful actually in terms of spying on uh, this footballer I think it was if I'm not mistaken yes. and yeah going to the west and um, and uh, and I love the scene where uh, some of the uh, DDR members were watching television and uh, th this footballer was saying how wonderful the West was and he was being so yeah. dark, saying, turn that off. I hate, <laughs> we hate the West. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but that hatred is incredible how strong um, the uh, East German government loathed and detested the, anything yeah. to do with the West and would stop people from uh, saying anything positive about the West. Yeah, it was not, um, you, you were not able um, to talk openly about the West in East Germany and, um, and people who, who did this um, had to deal with a lot of pressure. And um, even with a lot of things um, they would like to have for their own lives, they wouldn't anymore um, get from the government. And so it was uh, not easy for people to talk really open. Amazing, amazing situation. I mean, I, I've seen other films like Das Leben der Anderen, uh, mm -hmm. Ballon, um, and there have been a whole raft of films about the East about surveillance and the Stasi and so on. D did you use any of those films at all as uh, part of the influence in the way you made Last Execution? Not really, because um, as I um, as I told before, I um, spent a lot of time on the research and a lot of time of um, to come as close as possible to the um, to the GDR and to the life of Dr. Werner Teske. And for me. Um, I, I decided um, in the script that um, extreme um, possibility of being as close as possible to him, and uh, that was all with what with um, that was driven me, um, and to make all the decisions uh, I made for the movie. And so, um, no other movies were not really in my focus at this time. Okay, but I think it's very important that we have a lot of movies about the GDR because um, I traveled a lot with my movie um, when um, it has a theatrical release last summer. I traveled to a lot of German cinemas um, and especially in East Germany. And I talked again uh, to a lot of people um, who lived during this time. And um, they all said to me, it's necessary that we have these movies. We need to talk about the past and um, we need to talk about our experiences and it's still not far away um, and it's it, it took place in the 80s and um, and so um, they said to me that um, there are a lot of really huge themes in the world right now like the crime like the climate crisis like the pandemic like we have a war at the moment in Europe uh, which uh, which is taking place and and but um, we have our own past and it's very helpful if we we, we have rooms, uh, places like cinemas where we can come um, 
emotionally together and talk about our feelings and our experiences. And so I think it's very helpful if you have a lot of movies about this time. Absolutely, absolutely. I think it's such an important part of, of German history and, and, uh, um, uh, and of the uh, split in the past, etc. Uh, it, it's interesting when you look at films like uh, Goodbye Lenin, which um, is a more benign view of, uh, uh, I suppose, of East Germany and, and Leander Hausmann, who, uh, who is uh, also from the East, but he also, uh, and he has a film in the festival, Stasi Comedy, etc. He, uh, it's, some people regarded that that period of time in the East was very positive for them, that, that they had a, a good time. And, and it's interesting that, uh, are you saying that more people are saying, no, it was a terrible time to live it, uh, during that period? I think, um, yes, there were a lot of people who were very happy um, um, during this time as well. But um, um, to this movie, a lot of people were coming who had struggled with the Stasi and who lived under a lot of pressure. Um, because they had uh, other opinions or um, um, and so I think um, Nashos, um, The Last Execution, it's a, a, a movie about um, the fight for survival of a human being inside the system and somebody who tried to escape from the system and um, they never ever allowed it, anybody to escape and so um, it's a movie about one special part of the GDR. Yeah. And um, so I would never ever speak in general about this country and about the people uh, who, who lived in this country. But um, yes, you are right. There uh, were a lot of comedies uh, in the past, like Goodbye Lenin about the GDR, or now it's a Stasi Komödie by Leander Hausmann. Um, I think some people need um, other bridges perhaps to the past then this very serious ones, um, they need perhaps to laugh about something to get an entrance um, to reflect on the past. I myself could tell that um, I never ever would have done a comedy about this, uh, this period of time because um, I talked to too many people who um, really suffered and who really um, had a harmful life um, because of this government. Exactly. Oh, absolutely right. And, and uh, uh, no, very, very valid comments. I, I found it incredible to, to learn that, uh, and I think you said this, that um, he was the last person to be executed, Werner uh, um, Teske in 81, but it took six years for the death penalty to be abolished. That, that sounds incredible to me. Um, it was all secret, top secret. The trial was top secret. The executions were top secret. Um, and it was the place where they took place. Um, it was a top secret place as well. And nobody knows about all these executions inside the GDR. The citizens don't know about it. And um, when, um, when um, the government announced that they will from now on stop executions, everybody really was shocked because nobody knows that executions took place in the GDR. So um, that's it, yeah. Wow, and that was only two years then uh, until the uh, fall of the Berlin Wall in 89. How, uh, how, how interesting. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So uh, tell me, Francesca, um, you've screened the film in Germany. Uh, you mentioned it screened at the Munich Film Festival, one of my favourite festivals, and uh, and, wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> and and in Germany itself. Ha has the film or will the film be travelling, apart from Australia, to other countries? Yeah, yeah, I travelled with the movie. Um, it has its world premiere in Chicago at the Chicago Film Festival last autumn. I stayed there in October. And then I traveled to the Tallinn Film Festival in Estonia and to a film festival in Poland. It's called Kamera in Marsh and to other countries. And um, now it's in, um, it's in Danish cinemas. And before it was in, uh, in, Span uh, in Spanish cinemas. And um, so, yes, I'm very thankful. Um, I'm also very thankful to be now in Australia with this movie because I think we could all be so happy that we can now travel again and come together in the cinemas and talk about 
um, really urgent themes, I think. And um, Nashus is a movie from the past, but it has also some aspects which are also important for the present, I think. Um, it's about a political system from the past, but the methods they are dealing with um, really are, some of them are really the same other autocratic systems or dictatorships are dealing with. And so it was always my wish to tell um, not only a movie from the past, a historical one, but also um, to make clear that still systems exist um, where people have to deal with a lot of pressure when they have other opinions than the leaders have. And so I'm, I'm also a photographer and I am working on a photography series since 12 years now. And therefore I'm traveling a lot um, through the whole world. And I recognize that um, we have different political systems and um, that you can't uh, speak freely in every country and that people really have to um, really are in, in a lot of fear about their own lives if they have uh, any other opinions. And uh, so um, that um, infected me very much to uh, direct this movie, not only um, as a historical one, and you can say, yes, it's one from the past and I can learn a lot about the GDR, it's one side of this, but the other side is that um, hopefully, um, yes, you have also aspects which are, um, which are speaking for themselves in general about the current times. Absolutely agree with you. I mean, uh, I suppose you, you would be interested in screening the film in Russia, where such an open country. <laughs> uh, it was screened at the German Film Festival in Russia, yes. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> but I am... Um, were not, um, uh, I wasn't there for a QA. Ah, I was going to say, <laughs> did you say hello to Putin, who is, uh, yes, he would have said some really. Yeah, nasty. I think yeah, <laughs> it would be. <laughs> 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 anyway, we'll, we'll, we'll leave it there. And, and you're absolutely right. There are some other countries, uh, Iraq and others, where uh, you cannot speak out. And, and this film reflects what is still happening in, in some countries today. Uh, look, congratulations on the film. It, it's a, a, an excellent film and, and a real highlight of this year's German Film Festival. A couple of quick questions to conclude. Um, are you working on another film at the moment? Um, yes, I have another, I have new ideas uh, for, yes, I'm working on a script at the moment, yes. <laughs> I can't tell a lot about it at the moment because I'm still developing, and, um, but um, I'm always interested, uh, interested in political themes and themes which um, really infect us. Okay, okay. And, and the other question I love asking all filmmakers, are there any particular films or filmmakers they might be German, they might not be, who perhaps have influenced you in terms of being a filmmaker? Yeah, yes, yeah, yeah sure, uh, there are a lot. And, um, but uh, just to mention the Danish cinema, one of, um, a, t a teacher of mine um, influenced me the most. It was Morgan Zukov. He wrote Fest and Das Fest, um, this, um, the celebration by um, Thomas Winterberg. He um, wrote it together with Thomas Winterberg and um, the way the Danish cinema is telling very direct um, through the eyes of um, a human being um, a story and um, it's very basic. They don't use music um, through this dogma period. Um, they skip away, they, they took away everything they don't really um, need. Um, and so I very much like this period of time in, in, um, in the history of cinema, the dogma period of time. Yeah. yeah. And um, so that I would like to mention. And, um, and Inaritu, as a director, uh, he did 21 Gram and um, um, wonderful movies, Babel. And um, so um, it's the same. He's very close to human beings. and. Um, and yeah, it's a whole, um, it's a whole colorful possibility of our emotions. Um, he's, and so, yes, perhaps he's one of the directors um, I really adore. 
Fair enough. I, I, very descriptive, and uh, that sounds uh, excellent. Look, congratulations again, uh, Francesca, on the last execution, Nashus, screening uh, at Palace Cinemas as part of this year's German Film Festival. Enjoy your stay in Australia, and thanks so much for talking with me. Thanks a lot, and I'm really looking forward to the Q&As, and um, hopefully I will see you all in the cinema. All the best. Thanks a lot. Cheers. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Okay. Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>